Hello friends, this video on agriculture part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. That we talk about some of the techno institutional changes in agricultural development. Okay. Now, what do we mean by techno institutional changes? Now, as we discussed that India is a country with a huge population and it is important that we need the demands of the increasing population. So for that, agriculture productivity has to be really good. So a lot of efforts have been made right from the beginning. So here we are going to talk about some of the technical changes like something, some advancement in technology as well as some of the changes which was brought into the scene by some institutions. So for example, green revolution was a big uh, step for agricultural development. So green revolution was all about the use of high yielding variety seeds so the HYV seeds, uh, use of fertilizers, use of insecticides, pesticides, irrigation. So all of that with the only aim to increase the crop productivity. So the idea of green revolution was to make India self-sufficient in crop production. Right? Green, that means more crops. However, uh, it turned out that green revolution was not a great success. And that was mainly because the use of all these fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides, like all these chemicals, they helped in Im improving the crop productivity, but at the same time, they were harming the environment. So it turned out that the net outcome was a loss. Because if we are harming the environment, we are killing ourselves. So there is no point in increasing the crop productivity by killing ourselves, right? So that way, green revolution was not a great success. But yes, this was one of the changes that was brought into picture for agricultural development. Another such step was taken, which was called white revolution, which was brought into picture somewhere around 1970s and it is also very popularly known as Operation Flood. Now what was this about? So White Revolution was a dairy development program. So the idea was to you know make dairy products accessible throughout India. Right now, have you heard of the brand Amul? Amul cheese, Amul butter, Amul ice cream. So, Amul is a very popular brand uh, in dairy, right? And the man behind Amul was Dr. Vergis Kuren, and he played a very crucial role in White Revolution. So, what was done in White Revolution was that uh, a milk grid was created such that the producers were linked to the consumers like those people who were actually handling the production of milk from the dairy animals they were linked directly with the consumers throughout india so what was done was the middlemen were cut now the moment the middlemen were cut what happened was the price the regional price as well as the seasonal price for milk got reduced and as a result milk was able to reach out to each and every section of population of india so that's how milk was made accessible to everyone right and since uh, as i said that Ver dr Vergis kurain played a very crucial role and he is considered to be the main person behind white revolution so this was again another step but this step was very specific to the dairy so it was only for um, to make milk reachable to all parts of the country because it's not just milk right there are a lot of dairy products it could be ghee butter um, paneer uh, cheese so they are all obtained from milk so that was white revolution next there were provisions made for crop insurance against natural calamities for example uh, sometimes there is a flood or there is a fire or there is some sort of disease in a particular crop so what happens so huge amount of crop gets wasted so a provision was made so that insurance can be provided for the crops so that there is not too much of loss for the farmers so that for that purpose crop insurance was introduced provision of loan facilities to farmers 
Now, as I said that in, in India being an agricultural country, the moment we talk about agricultural development, we will have to think of the farmers development because they are the ones who are directly involved in agriculture. Now, if a farmer is poor, if a farmer doesn't have money, he will never be able to, you know, make use of better techniques to increase crop productivity. So someone has to give him money. Now, who will give him money? So for that purpose, a lot of Grameen banks and cooperative banks were formed, who, which would give uh, interest free loans to the farmers or sometimes very low interest rate loans to the farmers so that they can buy inputs for their agriculture. Not only that, there were a lot of government schemes which were uh, introduced for the farmer's benefit. One such scheme was KCC, that is Kisan Credit Card. Kisan is a farmer. So Kisan Credit Card's aim was that to give quick and timely access to affordable credit. For example, let's, let's talk about ourselves. So when we carry a credit card in our wallet, we do not have to worry and we enter into a shopping mall and let's say that we like to dress now i do not have a single penny in my pocket but i have a credit card and if i think that you know if uh, you know i i want to really buy this dress i have the credit card and i swipe the card and i buy that dress right so credit card gives us very easy access to money so even though we do not have cash right now but we can get some credit immediately and instantly so the same is true with farmers so even though they do not have money right now they do not have time to apply for loan and do all that documentation if they have a credit card they can quickly swipe that card and get some money and once they uh, i mean you know cultivate the crops when once they take them to the market sell them off and then they have some money then they can pay off the credit Right. So that was Kisan credit card. There was another such government scheme called PAIS that is personal accident insurance scheme. So this scheme covered all the KCC card holders. That means all the farmers who had a Kisan credit card. So for all of them, a coverage was provided against their death and disability due to accidents. That is if a farmer meets with an accident. So what happens? It is not only the farmer who suffers, but his entire family because he is not able to work anymore, right? So for all such accidental cases or death cases, insurance was provided to the surviving family members. So these were some of the government schemes. Not only that, there were weather bulletins which kept the farmers updated about the upcoming weather because weather play a very critical role in agriculture. Now there are crops which need rainfall so you need to be updated whether you know it, it is going to rain in the coming days or not so that you can plan your agricultural activity accordingly so weather bulletins were forecasted in televisions as well as radio so that farmers get to know about uh, the changes in the weather and can act accordingly so you see a lot of steps have been taken for development in the field of agriculture not only this, this, there is, um, this, these are very popular terms called Bhudan and Gramdan. Do you know what are they? Dan means donation. Bhu means uh, zameen, right? That is land. So Bhudan means donating land. Gramdan, Gram means village. So Gramdan means donating a village. Now, this movement, Bhudan Gramdan movement, was initiated after independence by Vinoba Bhave. So, he was a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. And after independence, he used to, you know, kind of roam around from one village to another and used to um, give speeches and lecture to people to and tell them about non-violence and all the principles of Mahatma Gandhi, basically. Now, there was this movement where uh, it so happened that there were few very poor villagers who didn't have anything. So they demanded some land so that they can use that land for their economic well-being. That is, they use that land to get to cultivate crops, get some food for themselves and also make some money. So what happened was there were there was a person named Sri Ramchandra Reddy who donated 
some of his land to those poor people and that was called bhudan because he donated the land he gifted the land to the poor people for their well being so bhudan is a, an act where the zamindars or the rich people the rich land owners they donate land to the poor landless villagers for their economic well being so that is bhudan in a similar way sometimes the rich people they donate villages like you may come across big uh, rich people who own many villages so they donate a village to a particular section of the people so that they can you know uh, use that village and they can cultivate crops there they can make some money they can lead a good life so these kind of uh, movements also happened which were called bhudan and gramdan and they were also in the benefit of the poor people Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes, and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics, and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.